Okay, me. Welcome back. Uh, last time uh, we learned about the theory of uh, convolutional neural networks, and now we finally uh, see an application also in the medical field. So, what uh, did you prepare for us? Hi, Max. Yes, today is the exciting part. So, we'll finally put our hands on. The tutorial consists of two parts. So first part, we will understand two famous CNN models and how we use out of it. The second part, we adjust this existing model toward new data, the medical data this model never seen before. So we'll do that first All part. All right, today. great. And I think uh, we start again with the Google Colab book where we also have uh, the capability of carry out this uh, machine learning task. So what did you prepare for us? So how do we start? This time we need to load some image data set. So we need to first link the Colab book to the Google Drive. So each of you, you have to execute the first cell mount to your Google Drive, um, you will see the data in the um, repository we will upload. Uh, but do this linking to your Google Drive and then um, we can start. So first order we have to so, load so basically, two models, famous model BGG and Inception. So basically uh, we have to add our Google Drive folder so that we can work with actually some um, files so in our case some images and this is basically right. what this command does okay i understand so now um, how do we continue what's the first step when we want to um, do uh, machine learning so first order you have to load popular cnn model today we will load spgg and inception model i think you have heard of probably inception it's famous CNN model developed by Google, um, BGG also famous. It was in, developed 2014, if I remember correctly. It also performed pretty well. Both hmm. are famous models, so we will understand. So, so as I understand, we do not develop our own uh, convolutional neural network. We just take something that is already there, like uh, already developed program. That's very, very important. To me, it doesn't make sense to develop yet another novel convolution neural network because there are already thousands, thousands of great models are existing. Why not reuse it? It saves your time. It saves your computer computational resources. It it also it, it is also common practice in the industry. All right. Okay. So now we need these already uh, developed and also pre-trained models. So how, how do we actually get them into our Colab book? It's just like loading Python packages and you are downloading the skeleton of the model. Skeleton means like number of layers and uh, you know the morphology contains pulling a layer and so on so you load the uh, morphology the skeleton and then you also load the weight and biases already other guys trained on on this model and this is defined on um, as a parameter called weight so we are using weight the model trained on the data set called Im ImageNet. We're going to address this data set later. Um, and these other two parameters are also important. Um, the second one, you want to use the finer fully connected layer for this example. Um, this, we need to change it for the second tutorial, but I will not going to go deep, but today we use as it is. So, I will include the final layer. And then third layer, uh, it's an activation function type. Uh, we use softmax for the um, classification because this is good to um, pr predict the image with the probability. So okay. many people So basically using. at the moment, we just use the model out of the box. So we load it and then we just initialize it with standard parameters. I mean, initialize is maybe not the correct um, terminology, but we 
download All right. already pre-trained weights okay. on this data Okay, Kimi, then go ahead, mm -hmm. download the model. So it's printing out, it's downloading from the Google storage, Google Drive, I think. They uploaded the weights on the shared drive. I downloaded in six seconds. Instead of training like mm. many, many days, if you have to develop your network, it's a pretty cool. You're already sitting on top of the giant All structure. right. Like six seconds. Okay. Second, you download. And you loaded basically now two different models. So uh, what is the difference between those two models? Can you explain a bit what VGG16 looks like? Also what Insect uh, version 3 looks like? Yes, it's indeed important to understand um, how they work um, and also how they look like. So this is the morphology of VGG and Inception V3. Um, VGG is relatively shallower than Inception V3. Inception V3, it looks quite interesting and very deep. It consists of many convolutional block instead of linearly you propagate data input to the final layer. There are parallel processing and then you concatenate it and then propagate to the next block and mm. so on and so on and then you make a final uh, classification. Okay, Kimi, in our... Th my question to, to everybody, which one do you think contains more parameter? Which one would be more heavy to c computate? So I guess the second one. Right, this seems quite complicated, but um, the truth is the first one, VGG, consists of about 138 millions of parameters. Inception, it consists of just two, 23 million oh, wow. parameters. And we can see it with this function called. Okay, summary. so basically, these blocks that we are seeing here is actually. Uh wide range of different uh, pooling layers and filters as we discussed in the theory block. So in one block, there is not only one thing, but many. Exactly. So um, each block representing different layer, it can be convolutional layer, it can be pooling layer, it can be fully connected layer. Also, different color indicating different size of the filter. You will see all the detail with this function called summary. Shall we continue? So if I make an execution with this statement, you will see the overview, what's going on inside of this VGG model. And you will see all the detail, how many convolutional layers this model consists and also order of the layer and number of the parameter and size of the filter mm, and depth. All right. So um, can you maybe explain a bit what these numbers in the output shape uh, column mean? Mm -hmm. So if you see very first layer, it is the input layer. Basically it's an um, image. You are translating image to uh, array data structure. So this image is two types of the image with three uh, RGB color. It's indicating as three, three, three um, how do I say depth. So it's a depth information at the end of the output shape. And um, more you go into the final layer, the size of the input image is shrinking mm. but the depth of the image and the features are increasing okay so what i understand is so our input pictures are basically uh, 200 pixels wide and um, uh, long and this basically means that one input neuron is represented by one pixel and because we have three colors we also need basically three separate uh, input layers. Right, so this is called as uh, depth because we are using layer as a terminology for different um, mm. uh, components of com um, convolutional neural net network. So the last one we say uh, it's depth of the feature or images. 
All right, and I see also that uh, the size is getting smaller, but the depth is getting longer. And this is then what we discussed under this uh, two things. So one were filters and the other um, aspect of convolutional neural network were basically these compressors. And the compressors make the picture smaller in this case. Exactly. So we last time talked about convolutional layer and pooling layer. So pooling layer, it's it is uh, decreasing size of the um, input images, um, but the convolutional layer, it generates many features from the images. So it has many perspectives to understand the image. Uh, and you will see this, uh, the last element, it, it is contribution of the convolutional layer. The, the Diminishing size of the filter is the contribution from the pooling layer. All right, great. And it helps for the computation because it's um, <laughs> you you are saving lots of um, information. And the last and the last column is basically like the amount of parameters which uh, are actually trained, and these are quite large numbers. It is a large number. But still, convolutional layer, pulling layer, they are relatively lighter than fully connected layer. So fully connected layer is a conventional neural network. Um, and usually, you see really high number of the parameter. And so fully... it's better not to have many fully connected layer if you are, mm. are using convolutional neural network. And networks. fully connected means basically each neuron is connected with all the neurons in the next layer. So that's why it's exactly. so many parameters. Exactly. Um, unlike convolutional component, has it shares many weights because of the convolution it's the filter con contains the shared information instead of each pixels you you don't have to train each pixel the filter you need to train filter instead of each pixel that's why um this fully connected layer is computationally more intensive than convolutional layer. Okay, so now we talked about the shape. So uh, what are the next steps? So what can we do with these neural networks? So what we need to do, we load the model and we understand how the model look like. Um, we need to convert input images, which model can understand because model doesn't understand image. It only understand number, right? So let's go the code one by one, line by line. Um, so first order, you have to load the sample images. So given image looks like uh, something like this. I'm using display mm. Python package to print out image on this. Um, this so it's basically a dog. Uh, right, so it's take a dog. a picture of the dog. Right, but um, this model doesn't understand this image, so you have to convert it to the array. And this step, you converted this mm. image to the array, and then you concatenate each of the pixel into the one-dimensional array. And then finally, you normalize the uh, input values between minus 10 to 10 if you print out. And then uh, the list of the one dimensional array, the model finally understand. Okay, and basically this array representation, you can imagine as like a spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, we have intensities for these three colors. So we have basically three different spreadsheets, one for red intensity, one for green intensity, and one for blue intensity in this case. Exactly, so each pixel contains three RGB value, and then you concatenate it into one array, and then you even normalize the input, and then you will see the image something mm. like this. Lots of values. And then you propagate this, exactly. Okay, and this is basically the format mm. our network can handle. 
Exactly. All right. So. And then this number we propagate to, for instance, PGG model, mm. and it extracts the feature and then it make an output. Um, this is just one line. You how you make the prediction. All right. Then let's do a prediction. Uh, but if you print out the output, it's not so intuitive. Mm. You will see again a lot of wow. number. So each number is indicating the probability of each class. And this ImageNet data set, it consists of 10, oh no, 1,000s of classes. And um, <clears throat> well, you can see the number of the um, values okay. is 1,000. So basically, um, the last layer, which is telling us what we see, um, has maybe a thousand outputs and it was actually trained with um i don't know thousand different classes and it just tells us basically mm. for each of this class how likely does this picture that we gave this network actually correspond to this class exactly but um it's a lot of work you have to see the number and matching mm. to each class so there is another um, Python package you can already load and map, uh, which is the most likely this image look mm. like. And this is the function code, decode prediction. Um, and you assign this 1000s of output probability, and this is the um, a parameter you want to print out the top three most similar to to the three classes and it's already um it's finding out which one is most similar so it even tells us the breed and then it gives us the probability so this is 85 percent uh probable uh, staffordshire bull terrier and right vgg it is high confidence that this image is staffordshire mm -hmm. bull terrier all right but it also gives us the next probabilities but this is quite far away mm -hmm. so American Staffordshire Terrier, which is actually similar, like a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, I guess, but it's only 9% uh, chance that this is true. Right. Okay. Ah, that's pretty cool. So... Uh, we can do the same thing with... Uh, we do everything in one cube. It is, in fact, predicting similarly, but with different confidence probability. Uh, all right. So we also get a Staffordshire Bull Terrier with uh 78 percent chance mm, right that's pretty cool so okay so these models were actually trained with um dog pictures so they are quite good at classifying this so but at the moment um we want to actually apply these models for healthcare right so mm. what healthcare image uh, do we want to throw at these um, networks that's a very good point. The model, it is doing very well toward the image it already has seen. But what about medical image the model never, ever have seen before? For instance, Gramstein images. Uh, we load one gram positive. This, this model never seen this image before. So this and is basically... Um, microscopy picture of um, some bacteria. Exactly. Um, and the model, it predicts mm, it must be an envelope, but not <laughs> really high confidence probability. <clears throat> All right. So it's, it doesn't know what it is. So, okay. The same for the inception tree. But um, these models were never trained for that. So, and uh, now in the next uh, tutorial, we are actually going to learn how we can use um, images of bacteria and also teach these models then to also classify bacteria. Right. So, next tutorial, we will retrain partial of the um, loaded model toward the new data data set, medical image data set, and then finally model can understand also the new data they uh, never seen before. Right, this sounds pretty cool.